Mary Magdalene had gone through the horrors of watching her beloved Savior writhing in pain on the cross for six hours until he finally died. The image of his face that the Bible says was beaten so bad that people had to turn away because it was such a grisly sight. The Old Testament even says that they had ripped the uh, beard out by the roots. He was a swollen, bloody, beaten mess. The priests beat him with his fists. The crown of thorns severely marred his forehead. Our Savior's blood poured down from the cross of Calvary. Mary shuddered as she remembered those awful events. She was on her way to the grave to pay her respects. Very early that first Easter Sunday morning. I'm sure the sights and the sounds and the smells of what happened three days before were permanently embedded into her mind. But all of a sudden, she encountered something different. She went to the place where she expected there to be a stone and the stone was rolled away. And the tomb was empty and a celestial being, an angel, stood in there with a message. I'm not sure about you. But I believe if I were to visit a grave and I saw a celestial being, that would damage my calm. The angel had a message. Her frustration, who took the body? What's going on? But the angel had a message. Our passage outlines three basic commands that this angel gave Mary. Mary had come from a very, very, to put it very mildly, a very rough weekend. And the angel had three commands for her, three pieces of advice. So you, here you are. Easter Sunday morning, 2016. Everybody's coming from different walks of life, different things going on in your life. Some of us knew Frank Fitch. He passed away this week. So some people have that fresh loss of a loved one on their heart. Some people are struggling with watching a sibling or a child self-destructing. Some people are watching other things go on or are enduring things and we come this Easter Sunday morning, heavy laden with burdens and problems and distress. Might have even not made it today, but it's Easter. I really ought to go. So you've dragged yourself here, and you hear now the preaching of the word, and I want you to listen, because I believe that God the Holy Spirit Put it together so that you hear this message right here, right now, because that's what you need. 
And the message comes from the Easter angel. The message comes from what that angel told the Marys. And that message echoes through the corridors of time. And the things that were told then are still true now. May God reach you right where you live as we listen to the voice of an angel. First thing that that angel said was fear not. The angel answered and said unto the woman, this is Matthew chapter 28 and verse 5, Fear not, for I know that you seek Jesus, which was crucified. Wait a minute. Fear not. They just killed my Savior. The Romans are out of control. The Jews are full of hate. Anybody who has been part of what they would call the way are going to be hunted down. What do you mean, fear not? Fear not? Don't you understand what I'm going through? Don't you understand the darkness that I'm walking in right now? Fear not. The message still comes today. The message comes to every one of you. Fear not. And you'd say, hey, wait, hold on. What do you mean? Fear not. Don't you know what I'm going through? Don't you know what the doctor just told me? Don't you know what I'm watching my loved ones go through? Don't you understand the, the load that I'm carrying? What do you mean, fear not? Hey, listen. Fear not, because I know you seek Jesus. See, some of you may, may have reason to fear because you're not looking for Jesus. But you're here in church, and the presence of Christ is here, and the Bible promises that the presence of Christ is here, so guess what? Fear not! You say, yeah, wait, wait, wait. Uh, you don't understand what I'm going through. Hey, listen, I don't need to. And you may not even understand what you're going through. But the message still echoes, fear not. You seek Jesus. Fear not. Fear not. What do you mean, fear not? The tomb is empty. I was looking for Jesus. And the tomb is empty. I think someone stole the body. Fear not. The tomb is empty and you're wrong. Fear not. Jesus isn't missing. He's escaped. Fear not. The tomb is empty. Every other philosopher is dead. Every other religious leader is dead. Every other religious leader or political leader that from days gone by is in the ground somewhere. But fear not, verse 6, he is not here. Well, I see that. But the reason why he is not here is a good reason not to fear. He's not here, for he is risen. Come see where the Lord lay. I love what the Bible says. Come see the place where the Lord lay. He is risen, like he said. See, the Bible said, Jesus said, listen, the grave's not going to hold me. But you know the deal. We hear words from God. We see truth from God, but then we see the reality of life, and we say, well, we, I must have misunderstood it. Well, it must be something different. But the Easter angel still says, hey, listen, fear not because he's not here. Fear not because he did what he said he would do. Go to John chapter 12. 
John chapter 12. I'm sorry. Matthew chapter 12. Matthew chapter 12. Matthew chapter 12 and verse 38. When Jesus was alive, he was constantly sparring with the Pharisees. And the Pharisees always wanted him to prove himself. And the Pharisees, with their hands on their hips, said, You know what? If you're really the Messiah, give me a sign. Certain of the scribes and the Pharisees, this is Matthew 12 and verse 38, answered saying, Master, we would see a sign from thee. But he answered and said unto them, An evil and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign. Should no sign be given it but the sign of the prophet Jonas. Meaning Jonah. For as Jonas was three days and three nights in the whale's belly, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. And the men of Nineveh shall rise in judgment in this generation and shall condemn it because they repented at the preaching of Jonas. And behold, greater than Jonas is here. Fear not. Why? Because listen, just as Jonah was in the belly of the whale three days and three nights and came out, I'm going to be three days and three nights in the belly of the earth and I'm going to come out. Now, folks were thinking, well, he must, that must be some parable, some other meaning. Certainly that couldn't happen. No, listen, he did just what he said he did. Fear not. Fear not because he had victory over sin. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Fear not, because he has victory over death. I am he that liveth and was dead. Behold, I am alive forevermore. You see, every time I think of religion, I'm terrified. You should be. Because on your own, in your own religion, you don't have a chance. You could try. You could try to do good. And it's not going to work. Of course, you might be one of those folks here today say, I don't try to do good. I don't care. None of it's None of it matters. I can do what I will. I'm going to have the fun I'm going to have because you know what? When I go into the ground, I'm done. I don't believe in all this hocus pocus stuff, but I came because somebody dragged me to church on Easter. Well, you know, just because you believe something doesn't make it true. You can believe you can fly, but you won't. Even though you be fully persuaded in your mind you can fly, you still can't. And you can be fully persuaded in your mind that you can have all the fun in the world that you want to have and live however you want to live and everybody just ought to leave you alone and you're just going to party your way through life. You can go ahead and believe that. But when you take your first breath after you took your last breath, you're going to realize you're going to live forever somewhere and you really should have been paying attention in church. Amen. See, you said, Pastor, I thought I said fear not. Fear not because you seek Jesus. Now you're there saying, I don't need anybody. I'm just trying. I don't need Jesus. I don't need salvation. I don't need redemption. I'm just fine. Leave me alone. Listen to me, God of fear. But I don't need to fear because I seek Jesus. And he has victory over sin. 
And he has victory over death. And he has victory over addiction. And he has victory over everything that would seek to destroy me. First piece of advice from the Easter angel. Fear not. The second one. And this is my dare to you. To those skeptics that are there. To those even who do believe, but your zeal has kind of waned. You're kind of in that lukewarm state. Come see for yourself. He's not here. He is risen. As he said, come see the place where the Lord lay. I want you to come and I want you to come into this grave. No, I, I'm good. The stones rolled away. I really don't like walking into graves. No. Get in here. Don't take my word for it. Look. As Mary, the Marys looked, as Peter and John looked, we read this account in John chapter 20 and stooping down and looking in, they saw the linen clothes lying Yet he went not in. Then cometh Simon Peter following him and went into the sepulcher and he seeth the linen clothes lie and the napkin that was about his head not lying in with the linen clothes but wrapped together in a place by itself. Went in that, and then went in that other disciple which first came to the sepulcher and he saw it and believed. For as yet they knew not the scripture that he must be raised again from the dead. I want you to get this. They walked in. And not only did they see an empty grave, they saw empty grave clothes. Now I want you to think about this. We, we really don't realize the traditions. They would wrap the body all the way up, like a mummy. Cloth, a burying cloth, all the way around. They would have a face, a napkin, that would go over the face as they wrapped the body. When they walked in, they saw an empty grave. They saw the grave clothes over here. And they saw the napkin folded up and set aside. I want you to get this. Jesus somehow came through those grave clothes and took that napkin that was over his face folded it up, set it aside before he walked out of there saying, I'm not going to need this anymore. Come and see. Listen, I want you to investigate the truth of the resurrection. There are folks who say, well, I, you know, I don't know what I'm going to believe. I don't know what. Well, then you know what? If you don't know, that's, that's fine. Then discover it. Get your face in the book and see if maybe there's some truth to it. See, here's the deal. You don't want to do that. You don't want to read the Bible. You don't want to start to investigate this stuff because there's, there's a little something in there that says, yeah, but if I do, what if I do and find that it's true? Well, it is true, so you might as well figure it out now. Look it. There are no atheists in hell. And everybody is going to believe in Christ at some day. Everybody is going to kneel and confess the name of Christ some day. There's a southern gospel song that said, Will you go to, to be with Jesus or will you be left behind? And they go on to answer that question and say, Well, that all depends on when you change your mind. 
Because everyone will change their mind at some point. Easter angel. Listen, you seek Jesus? Fear not. He's already conquered death. He already conquered hell. That grave is empty. Come and see. Investigate it for yourself. Start to look. And you know what? Those of us who are already born again, sometimes we got to look into the grave by faith again and, and start to realize, you know what? This stuff really is real. You know what? I, I do know that I just said goodbye to a loved one, but I know I'm going to see him again. You know what? I do see that my body is going uh, into eternity on the installment plan, one piece at a time. I see that. But glory to God, I know I'm going to have a new body someday. Why? Because I can look and see an empty grave and I have new hope. There it is, the voice of the angel. Fear not. Come see for yourself. Investigate it all over again. Come see for yourself. Why are you looking for the living among the dead? See for yourself. What's the last command the Easter angel gave? It's really good advice. You know what? You seek Jesus. He's not dead, he's alive. You've investigated it and maybe even reinvestigated it. You see it for yourself. This stuff is real. This stuff is true. I get it. Now what? Verse 7. And go quickly and tell his disciples. He is risen from the dead. Behold, he goeth before you into Galilee, and there ye shall see him. Lo, I have told you. And they departed quickly from the sepulchre with fear and great joy, and did run to bring the disciples' word. I would believe, based on the first call and response that we had this morning. I greeted you say, hey, if you believe that Jesus is risen from the dead, say amen. And you said amen. A bunch of you. Right here in New England, folks saying amen in church. Amazing stuff. So you say you believe it. If you believe it, you ought to be telling somebody. If you believe it, man, I'm telling you what, the Marys were believers. They came out of that experience talking to the Easter angel, and I, I you know, I, I can't imagine that they just kind of lumbered on their way, waddling all the way back to the disciples. You know, I got something to tell them someday. The disciples come talk, where you been? Well, I was over there and doing some stuff this morning. About sunset, they say, oh, yeah, I, you know, I've been meaning to tell you something. Jesus isn't dead anymore. You know, that didn't happen like that, did it? Mercy, they were absolutely busting at the seams. They just couldn't wait. They're just about to come out of their skin. Hey, listen to me. Hey, listen. They were about to come out of their skin. They couldn't wait. And they say, hey, guess what? Yeah, I woke some of you up. Listen, guess what? Jesus really is alive. I saw the grave. I talked to the angel. And we got to tell everybody. Now listen, if you really believe it, then you'd tell somebody. If you really believe that Jesus rose again, but you don't tell somebody, what kind of a monster are you? Listen. Jesus said, and by the way, he said this after the resurrection. Go ye into all the world. Preach the gospel to every creature. It's interesting. They went with fear and with joy. I well, said, fear not. Well, I don't think this was a fear, I'm so scared. It was a sense of awe 
And now, as far as they knew, they were the only two people in the whole world that knew that Jesus rose from the dead. You know what? They carried the responsibility of what they knew. The Bible says, Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. Oh, I realize everyone's a sinner. The price for sin is hell. Jesus paid that price, and if you don't trust in what Jesus did, you're going to die and go to hell. But he did pay that price. Man, i got to tell somebody. Now, you say, well, what if I tell somebody and they don't care? You tell it, you live it, and go tell somebody else. Not everybody that hears the gospel is going to believe. But listen, you give the truth to them, and you're clear. Move on, go to somebody that's going to listen. Go with a sense of urgency, go with joy. The Bible says today that sow and tears will reap in joy. This Easter, let's hear, echoing through the corridors of time, the words of the angel that will confront us in the middle of whatever we're going through. Listen, fear not, I know you seek Jesus. Listen, come see for yourself. Investigate it. Once you're convinced, go tell everybody. That's the message and the voice of the angel. Mm -hmm.